Welcome back to CBS Sports HQ presented by Penske. Here we go, Chris Hassel. Number one, Florida, baby. it's Florida, Georgia. I have to correct Hassel. At 3.30 on CBS, the top-ranked dogs taking on the Gators in Jacksonville. And, and here's a guy who knows a thing or two about beating the Bulldogs. Florida great Kevin Carter beat UGA four straight years, 91, 92, 93, 94. That's the kind of energy we like to ride before this weekend. Uh, University of Florida Hall of Fame, three-time SEC champ with the Gators, but also in the Florida Georgia Hall of Fame. Chris, Kevin Carter tapping in with us now. And before we get started, Kevin, what do you call it? Florida Georgia or Georgia Florida? I just need someone to back me up here. It is and will always be known as Florida Georgia. Um, I don't know what the guy next to you is really talking about, um, <laughs> but I'll but I'll straighten that up with him when I see him in person. So. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you. All right, let's get into it. The Gators um, before the bye, they beat South Carolina on the road. Um, but when it comes to facing top ranked opponents, uh, AP number ones, Florida does not have a great track record. They have eight straight losses against AP number one teams. What do the Gators and Graham Mertz, what do they have to do in your opinion, Kevin, to pull off this upset? They have to be more of what they are. Um, but when you look at Graham Mertz on the season, you know, he's really had a pretty good year. I mean, he's, you know, efficiency is up over 76%. He's thrown for a ton of yards, you know, throws for about 261 per game, um, is painfully efficient, doesn't throw a lot of interception. But the problem is, you know, is, is what this team can do collectively. Um, Graham Mertz is going to have to take care of the football like he has been doing. I mean, he's got a ton of touchdowns and only two interceptions on the season. So I think that's trending in the right direction. Any quarterback that has had success or any offense that's had success against Georgia, it's been because the quarterback's been able to process and deliver the football. Um, but it's going to be about this complete Florida team and what they're able to manufacture in terms of possessing the football, winning the vertical field position, winning the battle on special teams, and winning time of possession and winning the turnover battle. The little things in this game are going to be so important because Georgia just doesn't give you that much room for error in terms of what they do. I mean, Carson Beck on the other side is, you know, he's doing about the same thing, and he's starting to really sling it these days. I mean, he's thrown an interception in each of the last three games, but you can see this offense really opening up and expanding and, you know, not having possibly, you know, Brock Bowers, you know, he's finding, you know, Rosemary Jackson. He's finding some of these other guys in this offense and he's proving that he's one of the better passers in the SEC. Um, you know, he's getting better and better. So to beat this Georgia team is going to be about Florida's defense. And I think that's where, you know, us Gators are a little outmatched. This Georgia defense is still otherworldly. I don't know what people are talking about in terms of Georgia losing 29 players in the last, you know, two years in the NFL draft. This this Georgia defense is still like amazing. I mean, they've in six games, they've only allowed over 300 total yards in three of those ball games. Okay, understand what we're saying here in today's modern college football with the all the advantages that offenses have. Georgia is still rendering people powerless through the course of ball games. So manufacturing points, yes, but possessing the football, winning the turnover battle, winning the vertical field position, and having a little luck of a ball bouncing your way is how Florida gets this done. And that starts off with Graham Mertz taking care of the football. Yeah, we saw the numbers there for that Georgia defense. When it comes to every category, they're basically number one, top ranked in all of them, especially on third down conversions. That is a big one. All right, also on CBS, number 10, Penn State. They're trying to bounce back after their first loss of the season. A big one to Ohio State. Indiana has come to Happy Valley. And, and Penn State, speaking of converting on third down, they struggled in doing so versus Ohio State. So, Kevin, just how important is it for this Penn State team to really clean that up before they get Michigan? in a couple weeks they have to establish someone on the outside that can win um, the difference in that ball game really you know wasn't necessarily you know both defenses were as good as advertised both running games were as nearly as good as advertised but the difference came in and quarterback 
conversion on third down, being able to keep drives going, not letting drives get into the red zone stall. I mean, both these defenses were masterful, but Drew Aller has to be the difference. And that's what we said going into this. You know, one of these teams has arguably the best receiving core in football, and maybe that helps Kyle McCord look a little better in terms of what he's got to use, and maybe that's why they won the game because they have that outlet. They have a, a you know, Maserati, Marvin Harrison that can win on the outside against anyone. We haven't established that, or Penn State rather hasn't established that within their offense. And Drew Aller hasn't Aller hasn't shown that he's the person that can process on a level to get the ball and utilize these receivers in such a way. Maybe they can't win versus maybe they couldn't win versus the secondary of. Ohio State. Maybe that was the key. Um, maybe that was the reason. We don't know this yet. Obviously, we, we're going to see if they bounce back, but I don't think they're going to get any more reprieve, you know, down the road when they face Michigan because that team is built the same way. That's the one thing I said about all three of these teams is that they were elite independently of their quarterback, but the quarterback is the person that has to make the difference. And versus the Ohio State Buckeyes, Drew Aller wasn't that guy. He could not get it done, whether it was not having the receivers or not being able to process and get the football out. That was the weakest link. Penn State, Indiana, that is at noon, and you can watch that on CBS. Let's talk about this Air Force team. They're trying to stay perfect. They get Colorado State this week. Air Force is ranked 19 in the AP Top 25. That is their highest ranking in over 20 years. Kevin, just how far do you think this Air Force team can go? At the beginning of the season, um, I was talking to Danny Canal. And we were talking about the best group of five team. We we're talking about what team is going to be that team that may emerge for a New Year's Six um, and, and challenge anyone else. And looking at the schedule, you know, the one thing about Air Force, I said, how are they going to reproduce and, you know, manufacture the offense that quarterback Zeke Daniels and leading rusher in the known universe, Brad Roberts, put up last season? How are they going to do this? And, man, I tell you what, Zach Larrier has stepped in at the quarterback position and they have not missed a beat. Emmanuel Michelle has stepped up in the run game and they haven't missed a beat. Um, and dare I say, Zach Larrier gives them a facet to this offense that they haven't had before. I mean, when you see, when I when I watched the, 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 the Air Force Navy game last week, I'm seeing, you know, just as many passing yards. Like, you know, Zach Larrier was four or five. He was 80% last week. Um, and, and they still hold the football. They still grind you out. They still dominate time of possession by nine or 10 minutes in the game. And their defense is the best defense in the Mountain West. So this Air Force team is really, 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 really good. It's really stacked in there. I think their schedule sets up favorably going down the stretch because they play some of the tougher matchups that they're going to have this season. This team, to me, is my pick for one of the best group of five teams and destined for a new year six. Yeah, they're looking to go 8-0 for the first time since the 80s. Kevin Carter joining us here on HQ. Enjoy Florida, Georgia, my friend. And as always, go Gators. A reminder, you can watch that on CBS. The top-ranked Georgia Bulldogs are going to be without Brock Bowers, but still a very, very tough test for the Gators. That is Saturday at 3.30 Eastern on CBS. And, of course, you can stream all of the action on Paramount+. Plus.